Right. I'm my bum. Right, I'm Matt Bum and welcome to my video on fixing LGA socket pins. With a bit of background info first, I think. About 20 years ago, I started building PCs and getting into enthusiast tech. And in that time, I've straightened a pin or two. Right, okay, so. Okay, so back in the day, all socket-based chips had pins protruding from them. Obviously, slot chips didn't. Then Intel designed the LGA socket. So now, the processor pins are on the motherboard and the CPU has what is known as landings. So in the past, I have placed broken off pins from the CPU into their respective hole in the socket on the motherboard. So you've lined up whatever pin's broken off the CPU and I've put it actually in the socket on the motherboard before the, the LGA sockets were a thing. So as far as I remember, this always worked. I have also successfully fixed bent pins on LGA sockets. The following is how I personally do that. But first, a hair cut. Although you can't see anything really. Right, to start with, you're going to need some needle nose tweezers or just a pin that's easy to hold, you know, one that like you're using a notice board, they're quite easy to hold, although I do prefer these, and you can get these in um, prying kits you can buy from Amazon, they're quite cheap, quite cheap, and very good. You're also gonna need a very strong light source so you can see what you're doing, a magnifying glass, some white printer paper, 80 GSM is good enough, some scissors, Yes, I'm fixing pins on a motherboard and you're wondering why I need scissors. And paper. All will be revealed. And above all, you're going to need patience and a steady hand. Okay, now start with touching something, grounding yourself um, on an appliance which is plugged into a grounded ball socket. You could uh, touch your PC case as long as it's plugged into a grounded ball socket or your PSU if you're setting up like a test bench or something, which you probably are. If you're fixing a, a CPU socket, then you're probably gonna test it outside of a case and you probably have a power supply there. Make sure that's plugged into the ball, touch it, and you're grounded and you're good to go. So then you need to make sure that the motherboard you're working on is laid on a non-conductive surface, like your motherboard box or an anti-static mat. Then you need to make sure that your strong light source is overhead and angled slightly towards you to uh, make sure that uh, shadows don't get in the way when you're working on the pins and when you're, what you're looking at. So if you put it directly above you, then every time you go over it, you're just going to have shadow and you're not going to be able to see. So, pretty pointless that. Now, the paper. What you need to do with this is you need to cut off, like I've done here, this is the actual bit of paper that I used, um, sl little slithers of the paper. And what you do with that is you slide it underneath the pins on the socket. Like you see, there's like a row of pins and you slide it underneath and it gives you a better view of the state of the pins. You'll be able to see if any are broken off, any are shortened, how much they're bent, what orientation they are. You can't really see that unless you've got something to contrast it with, which is what the paper's for. You can have a good look and you can guess, but using the paper shows exactly how the pins are. You just have to be very, very careful. If the pins are pushed down so far, then you need to get thinner paper and just push it underneath very, 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 very gently. You'll actually find that the paper can be used to straighten a row of pins all at once as well by applying a bit of pressure against it and all the pins will start to straighten up, which is really, really good. It's a really good tool to use and it's just a bit of paper. Okay, now you can use your needle nose pliers. Pliers? 
tweezers to uh, straighten any stubborn pins that might remain after you've used the paper technique, which is usually the case. Usually you've got some that won't straighten up with the paper. Don't push too hard with the paper because you could make things worse and you've got to be conscious of the pins that are behind the paper as well. But uh, yeah, use your needle nose tweezers to uh, straighten up any of the stubborn pins that won't straighten up with the paper. Um, you'll probably be doing this quite a lot. And you can go back to the paper to individually check what you've been doing to make sure it's all lining up and it all looks pucker. This will take some time, but it's definitely worth it if you want to save some money. If you've accidentally bent some of the pins on your socket and you want to straighten them back out, it's uh, it's much better, much, well, not much better. If you've got loads of money, go ahead, go and buy another motherboard. But if you haven't got lots of money, you want to save money, then try this. You've got nothing to lose. If you've bent your pins, you might think you're screwed, but just try it and you might be able to bend them back and you'll be absolutely fine. You'll be able to see what they're like using the paper technique and eventually when they're all straightened up it will just look uniform. When you shine a light against it you'll see pretty much uniform pattern. But if you look at the top of the cross of the pins you'll see like a little dot shining off each one of them. As long as all of those is perfectly aligned it doesn't really matter about the light source shining off them incorrectly. As long as they're perfectly aligned and you use the white bit of paper to see how high they're all sitting they should be absolutely fine. You'll also need to use a magnifying glass when you're working on the individual pins to double check that you're straightening them out. It can be a bit, um, your eyes can get a bit cross when you're looking at these pins because there's so many little pins all lined up in a row that when you're looking at them, sometimes they can blur in and out, which is where, again, the paper comes in handy. Because with the paper, you've got the contrast and then you can just see them all perfectly in a straight line or bent line. Yeah, that's what we're fixing it. And you can also use this technique to open up opportunities. So you can buy like a second hand motherboard that's got a few bent pins and use this technique to fix that motherboard and save yourself lots of money. Because generally speaking, those boards go for peanuts. The Z97 Sabretooth board that I'm working on in this video effectively cost me £1.50. £1.50? You can't even buy a pint of beer for that. But I could see on this particular motherboard that the pins are particularly bad. Some of the little heads of the pins have even snapped off. So, hmm. We shall see, we shall see if I can get this working. But I do like a challenge. Above all, be careful. Don't even attempt this if you're unsure. It's not worth it. And only do it if you can see that the pins are obviously bent. If, they're, if you look at the lights and they look like they're bent, but if you look closer and all the little dots on the top look straight, then don't even bother doing it. Just put the processor in, see if it works. It might work. Only do it if you're sure you need to. I plugged in a 4690K into the socket and I put on a stock heat sink there just for ease of uh, use, just to make it quick. And obviously that's the same motherboard. So wait for the camera to focus. Tomorrow, there we go. Right, let's turn the power supply on and see if we get any lights. Yes, that's a good sign. So next, we need to short the pins and see if it boots. Okay. I think the power pins are just in front of the light there. Yes, they are. Let's do it. Okay, good sign. Everything's spinning. The red light on the board there. Let's look at the screen. Voila! Success! That's awesome. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. If you want to see more movies from me on Bob Tech, then please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you all a little bit later on. Although I've got such little hair, you probably can't see anything anyway. And above all, you're gonna need patience and a steady hand, which I haven't got.